example 183. It says, this is a left-tailed example. At the 5% level, test the claim that the length of time it takes me to find parking on campus at FIU comes from a population with a median of less than 12 minutes. So what I'm doing here is looking at a problem that's going to involve the sign test. And it's a hypothesis test because it says test the claim. And it says that the median is less than 12. So our claim is that the median eta is less than 12 minutes, right? OK, so from there, I'm going to do my HO and HA, same as I always do. And looking at the symbol and the claim, I can see that HA and the claim are the same in this case. And HO is going to express the idea of greater than or equal to that number, so greater than or equal to 12. Now, from there, I'm going to look at what the sample size is for the problem. I need to know what my N is. Remember, I'm to discard any number that's exactly equal to the number I see in HO. So if any of these numbers are equal to 12, I will throw it out. There are no numbers equal to 12, so I'm going to count all of them. And how many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So my n here is just 8. All right, so now that I have n, my next step is to come up with my test stat. Now, the test stat depends upon what you have in HA. If there's a less than symbol, you're going to say it's the number of values less than. And in this case, we'll put the number we see in the claim HO and HA. That number is 12. So S is the number of values less than 12. Now, this number 12 should come from HO, but since in our problems they're all the same, it doesn't matter. But we really should take it from HO, because remember, we're testing HO. So S is going to count the number of values less than 12. Now, notice the pattern that you saw in the previous problem. It was greater than the previous problem, HA. And we use the phrase greater than. Here is less than. We use the name less than. That should be easy to remember that your test stat will go with your alternative hypothesis. OK, good. So now that we have that, let's try to figure that out. What would S be in this case? How many values are less than 12? Well, that one is. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It looks like all seven, of eight values, 7 out of 8 values are less than 12. The only one that's not is this one, right? All the others are less than 12 minutes. So it looks like only one value is greater than. So 7 out of 8 are less than 12. So that's your test step. OK, now the once you have the s is equal to 7, we do the p-value. So you'll have to look at the previous videos to see why the p-value is what it is. I'm just going to actually work it out here for us. So let's write out the p-value. Remember, it's the probability that a binomial random variable with p equals to 0.5 is greater than or equal to this number that you have here, which in this case is 7. So greater than or equal to 7. And that will always work out to be 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to one number less than this, which is 6. This number becomes our k for our binomial table. So k is equal to 6. The n we found before, the n is 8. And then we always use p is equal to 0.5. So always use p is equal to 0.5. Let's go to our binomial table. Let's look up 0.5, k is 6, under n equals 8, and we'll get that number that we need to construct our p-value. Okay, so we're at our binomial table, and we're looking for n equals to 8, p equals 0.5, and k equals 6. So n equals 8 is not on this first page. I'm going to go ahead and go to our second page of the table. That's where we'll find n equals 8. And there it is at the top, n equals 8. And we're looking for the p being 0.5. And we're going to go down until we see k equals 6. k equals 6 is the next to last value here. It's 0.965 then. 0.965 is the number we need. OK, so we found the answer from our table here to be equal to, so let's write the p-value here. p-value is equal to 1 minus, and the value we got from our table for this value is 0.965. So our p-value is equal to that, right? 1 minus 0.965. So our p-value ultimately ends up being, what? 0 0.035, or 3.5%. OK, so that's your p-value, 3.5%. Now, if that's your p-value, how does it compare to alpha? Well, the alpha in this problem is 5% there, so that says 5%. So we're going to say that 0 0.05 is equal to alpha. And when you make the comparison, you're going to say, hey, alpha is larger than the p-value. Whenever you have a small p-value, a p-value that's smaller than alpha, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. So reject the null hypothesis. And you're going to therefore support the alternative. Support 
the alternative hypothesis. And if you put those two things together and look at our claim, our claim is the alternative, so we're going to go ahead and say, hey, this indicates that we should support the claim that the median amount of time it takes to find parking on campus for me is under 12 minutes.